Hello, N4H&H here with a new arrival from HRO, Ham Radio Outlet, Portland, Oregon. I ordered this late Sunday night, and uh, here it is Wednesday afternoon, and it has already arrived. So, let's see what's inside. Bear with me. Let me get my knife. Okay, so we have a Yesu part number XF-130CN, and you'll see there it says CW Narrow Filter. This is the optional 300 hertz crystal roofing filter for the Yesu FTDX10. The radio already comes with a 500 hertz crystal roofing filter, so you can add this in and then you have a choice of the two. Uh, you don't have to actually replace the 500, you just add this one in addition. So uh, this filter operates at 9.005 megahertz. That's the first IF, first intermediate frequency of the FTDX10. Remember, the FTDX10 is a hybrid. It's a dual super heterodyne receiver plus the SDR chip. And then, of course, on the back end of that is digital signal processing. And so just a quick note about the uh, 9.005 megahertz uh, first IF. Radios were made with what we call down conversion for many, many years until the late 70s. Down conversion meaning that the frequency of the first IF is actually within the HF spectrum. And then there was a trend toward, you know, uh, making the first IF outside of the HF spectrum. For example, if you watched my video where I explained um, in a block diagram a modern HF receiver, I was using the Yesu FT450D uh, as an example. And the first IF for that radio is 67.899 megahertz, well outside of the HF uh, amateur spectrum. Uh, well, that, it was, you know, there was a trend to do that, having to do with uh, cost and simplicity. But the, uh, uh, you know, the down conversion really is better. And in 2003, I believe it was, it was that Tintech introduced the first down conversion receiver since the late 70s and then other companies have have followed suit with their offerings not every radio has down conversion down meaning again the uh, first if down inside the hf spectrum not in one of the hf bands but in the hf spectrum um so again not all radios are that way but yesu and kenwood definitely offer some radios with down conversion and then, um, you know, ICOM's gone the SDR route, so really it doesn't apply as much to them now. But uh, anyway, so this is a 9.005 megahertz uh, fil filter that is 300 hertz width. So it's going to really tighten up that, uh, that front end path for the CW signals coming through. So uh, we will go ahead and get it installed in the radio. I'll show you how I do that, and then we'll get it on the air and uh, check it out. All right, just bear with me as I get the radio and go to the workshop. Okay, here we are on the workbench and the uh, instructions say to remove the screws that hold the bottom cover on. It's always nice to have a little tray hanging around. These screws aren't very tight from the factory. I mean, you're not supposed to over tighten them, but they're really not, they're really easy to undo. Okay, carefully turn it around. So there should be a total then of nine screws that get removed 
to take the bottom cover off and that is the case so put that aside all right i'm gonna turn the radio around and show you where this piece plugs in you can see the little pins here let's see if the camera's got that uh it's up in the top there so right here in this area here you'll see two little connectors in there with pins sticking up that's where the board's going to plug in so let me do that So one side of the board has a place for four pins and one side has a place for three pins. So that makes it obvious which way this plugs in. You want to be really careful when you plug in something like this in. You don't want to uh, bend the pins. Don't force it. Let the pins line up. And I guess you heard the click. It's nice and snapped in there. And uh, the, next to it is the, let me show you, next to that one is the 500 hertz that comes already installed in the radio. It's right here on the circuit board. Um, <laughs> you might be thinking, wow, that one's smaller than that one. Yeah, this is this aftermarket one, probably a pretty high quality uh, crystal filter. So, well, we'll find out in a few minutes when I put it on the air. Let me put it back together and I'll be back with you in a, well... I will go ahead and put it back together here so you can see. No big deal. I mean, you, you saw how it came apart. You just reversed that. Again, when you place the cover back on, you want to make sure that it fits right. Don't force anything. And yes, I have an electric screwdriver I could do this with, but... I don't want to take a chance of, even though it does have a clutch on it, I just don't want to take a chance of over tightening these. But I am going to snug them up a little bit more than what Yesu did. And you know, you want to install screws if you don't know this already. Uh, you want to install screws at op opposite sides, opposite corners when you're putting something on like this. So now I'll go to the rear corner. I'm glad to have this workbench. My dad made this many, many years ago for, well, for my brother when he was in electronics school. What I'm doing is I'm loosening these a little bit because I noticed a little gap here in the front. I'm gonna press this forward just to make sure that it's fitting snug. Okay, now I'll go around and snug each one of them up a little more than Yesu did, but not too much. I've actually had screws fall out of my laptop, you know, from traveling, I guess, vibrating on a plane and stuff like that. So I actually, on my laptop, uh, well, I had to get replacement screws. And when I, what I did was, uh, you know, the bottom cover on a laptop, you can take that off to install more RAM on your laptop and uh, I uh, I used blue Loctite which is a good thing you know it, it keeps the screws from just backing out on their own but it's not so tight that you can't get it back out again you know with a screwdriver uh, red Loctite is more permanent so if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about there that's blue Loctite has nothing to do with working on the radio, unless I had screws that were a problem about backing out. So, another thing you want to be sure you do is get a get a proper size screwdriver, because you can uh, you can wear out the heads on the screws if you use too small of a screwdriver. While I'm here, I'm going to check these others. 
Yeah, they could use a little snugging. Now we'll go to the other side. And if you don't have a pad to put your radio on, uh, you know, consider maybe a towel. Just something to keep from accidentally scratching it or the table that you might have it on. This could be done on a kitchen table, you know. I'm just uh, thankful that I have this workbench and it has many, many uh, hours of use. Okay, and I'm going to check these others. And they could use a little snugging. Not too much, just enough. All right, now flip it over. And while I'm at in the tightening mood, I'm going to go ahead and check the ones on top. Okay, all done. I'll take it back into the ham shack, put it back on the air, and we'll see what happens with the uh, 300 hertz crystal filter. Okay, I'm back from the workshop. It's in another room where the workbench was. I'm back in the ham shack. The radio's back on the desk and all hooked up. And so uh, I've got it pointed up here at the screen so you can see everything on, on the monitor. It's a little better for you to see it that way. And uh, well, here we go. We're on that 500 hertz roofing filter and that is the same signal we were listening to earlier it's code practice from ARRL the ARRL so watch what happens when I click on the roofing filter button here now we have four options so it timed out let me see here we go 300 back to 500 300. I mean, this thing is already a magnificent CW radio. Now just think, we haven't done anything digital yet. So let's do that. Digital noise reduction at 15. My standard way to run that for CW. Audio peak filter. And I have it set at zero hertz because they're on frequency. I don't need to go find them. And now we'll narrow down. See it defaulted to 300 there on that filter, the digital did. Now we're going to take it down to 50. Well, it truly is code practice. There's nothing but when they send. Now, that doesn't mean the radio couldn't do that with the 500. Let's see if there's a difference. When you kick all this digital in there in there with it, does it really make a difference? When you add all this digital help, does it really make a difference to have a 300 hertz versus a 500 hertz mechanical filter? Well, let's do it. I'm going to toggle it while all the uh, digital assistance is turned on. They faded a little bit. Let's do that again. I'm going to turn the volume up considerably. See if you hear a little, little residual ringing in there. And now I'll go to 300.
the 300 does appear to help a little bit. It takes a little bit of the residual ringing out. But just think how good the digital is, even when using the 500 hertz crystal roofing filter. That's uh, one of the reasons that on the FTDX 101D, Yesu did not automatically include a 300 hertz uh, roofing filter. Now what they put on that radio is a 600. And I asked them about it and they said, well, you know, the digital is just that good. Um, having a 300 hertz crystal roofing filter is, you know, icing on the cake. But you can see there is a slight improvement. Or you can hear it maybe. Let me turn it up even more. It takes out a little bit of that residual ringing sound. Now let's try something else. I'm going to turn off the help. No APF. And we'll, we'll just do it with width. So we're not using audio peak filter. We're also not using the digital noise reduction. When you switch filters, it's gonna to go to that filters default width. So here we are with the 500 Hertz filter, no digital noise reduction, no APF. So just what the digital width control can do. I'm going to switch to the 300. Again, you think the noise came back, but what it did was it went to the 300 hertz bandwidth. I guess you see I've got the decoder on. Just one report can make a difference and help save a life. If you didn't catch the video I shot about the decoder, it does really well when you give it a little bit better than an S3 signal to work with, but it doesn't do too bad even with less than that. It may miss a letter here or there. Again, that's default 500 hertz. Here we are digitally going down to 50. Here, a little bit of the residual ring. Now I'll go to 300. I believe that it's it's one of the thing things that you could say is it it certainly helps icing on the cake it's not huge but it definitely helps let me try one other thing while I've got you here when you go to amp 2 you push a lot through that filter see this is the order of the receiver so the attenuators are first, and then you've got your uh, amplifiers or not. IPO means no amp. Um, technically, it's a small amp, a small gain amp that's optimized for signal to noise ratio. But it's not like these two here. So when I go to amp two, you're going to hear more noise come through. Hear it? It's not bad. So the more signal you push into that filter, see, you don't want the S meter to go so high up if you don't need to. 
the more signal you push through these roofing filters, the more ringing you're going to get. So now let's try this with the 500. Hear the residual ringing? It's worse with the 500, so we'll go back to the 300. Okay, so that's where I'm gonna engage digital noise reduction. With AMP2 now, digital noise reduction helps take care of some of that filter ripple it's called, the ringing. And now audio peak filter. And that did its job, didn't it? It's searching for 600 Hertz what I have my side tone set to and boosting it and only it. It's very narrow. Okay, well there you have it folks. The, the 300 hertz crystal roofing filter is definitely not a waste of money. If you're a serious CW uh, operator and you chase weak signals, that's gonna come in handy. And that's me, that describes me to a T. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I know it's a little bit long, but I wanted to go through everything from unboxing to installing uh, the, the uh, roofing filter and then I'll let you see it in action. See and hear it in action. So I want to thank my Patreons. You guys, thanks so much for helping me keep the channel going. Uh, you have no idea. If it weren't for you, I would not be able to continue doing this. It would be off my list of things to do based upon pri other priorities. So you guys help make this a priority and I do appreciate that. And of course, um, if you would like to become a Patreon, don't forget we're having a drawing June 30th. I haven't mentioned that in the last few videos, but drawing on June 30th and the uh, winner of that drawing from the list of Patreons, and this, is me, this means Patreons that have paid, the winner from that drawing will... Um, We'll, we'll spend an hour together on Zoom and just talk ham radio, play ham radio, whatever you would like to do. All right. Hey, and uh, by the way, if you would, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. That also helps us out. And uh, and you know the, the deal, right? If you click the bell, you'll get notified when I upload the next video. Okay. Hey, thanks for watching. And 73 from N4 H&H. &H.